So um, what is the truth? Um, I think after this, uh, I would say, Nobel Prize winning introduction, um, I come now to the truth, which is a difficult topic in times where we have alternative truths also. But uh, if you relate to an old German philosopher, we have three stages that uh, truth passes. And I think from the times when um, Heinz Josef Lenz first started to talk about left versus right, um, we came over the ridicule to the violent opposition, and I think we have reached presently the level of um, acceptance. These are my conflicts. What I would like to state here is that with regard to sidedness, um, it certainly affects treatment decisions, but predominantly, as you will acknowledge, in Ross wild type cancers, and also in these cancers, we certainly have gathered most of the evidence. We have much less evidence in this regard um, with regard to uh, Ross mutant patients. The prognostic relevance, I think, is uh, widely accepted, and we can say that there's a clearly better outcome in left-sided primary tumors compared to right-sided tumors, hazard ratio here being 1.5. Prevalence of right versus left in randomized studies. You can see the heterogeneity on the one hand, but you can also see the range of 19 to 34% in all these studies. Actually, you can, you can download the uh, talk um, later on, so you don't need to take so many photographs. Um, I start with the um, bevacizumab and the effect of sightedness on its effects. Um, we had a hard time to look at bevacizumab um, due to um, um, the fact that we could not meta-analytically evaluate the data. Um, very fortunately, Lupakis published the pooled analysis on the pivotal registration trials, as you can see here. And if you ask what was the effect of the addition of bevacizumab to chemotherapy in left versus right cancers, you can now see that the effect was comparable in uh, left and right-sided cancers. However, this effect became significant, certainly only in left and not in right-sided cancers on the one hand. And if you may remember the talk by Jean-Yves Duyam, the effect was moderate. I think this is one of the most important slides here, and I was really happy to see the um, publication by Cremolini and uh, co-workers from the Falcone group um, regarding the TRIPE study. What does it show us? It uh, compares fault foxiribev to fault firibev, and we are talking here, if you remember the last talk, about the addition of oxaliplatin to a regimen. And what you can see here is that right-sided cancers, they are the red lines, are the winners here. They are benefiting from in treatment intensification if you add oxaliplatin. And you can see that um, the effect is there in unselected patients as much as in the RAS BRAF wild type patients. And you can also see that in um, the right sided cancers, we have a market improvement um, in response rate from 55 to 64%. This nicely translates into an improved overall survival in right sided cancers. It does not so in the left sided cancers. And this is in, as we have just heard, stark opposition to what we um, um, have now um, um, seen from the charter study. So Cremolini, uh, she uh, summarizes and says, false fox eri plus bevacizumab may be regarded as the preferred option in patients fit for combination and independent of their molecular status, while for left-sided primaries, doublet plus bevacizumab remains the um, preferred option. I think that is really a, a step ahead in understanding. With regard to the anti-EGFR agents, I will look at it um, from two perspectives. Um, the meta-analysis regarding the chemotherapy plus minus the anti-EGFR agent on the one hand, and the meta-analysis um, regarding the head-to-head -head comparisons. I go through that rather fast. Um, this is the prime study, and it clearly shows that in right-sided cancers, there is no benefit from the addition of panitumumab um, to chemotherapy, Folfox chemotherapy, while in left-sided cancer, it has a very clear benefit. This is very nicely mirrored by the meta-analysis. You can see um, in left-sided primaries, if you now take also into account the CRISPR trial, um, um, that there is a clear benefit from anti-GFR therapy in left-sided cancers, while there is no benefit, but also no detriment in the right-sided cancers. Now, looking at the head to hep comparisons, Again, an example, FIRE 3. There is no difference between um, bevacizumab on the one side and cetuximab on the other side in right-sided cancers, while there's a huge difference with a delta of 10 months in left-sided cancers. 
The meta-analysis shows you very nicely clear benefit of the anti-GFR agent in the left-sided cancers, while in the right-sided cancers there's a strong trend um, for a superiority of bevacizumab-based um, therapy. It was important for me to understand that survival can be looked at as, as a whole, and the effects on overall survival are very similar to those that we can also obtain um, with regard to progression-free survival. Now, let's have just a look at the data um, as they have been published. I think if we look at right-sided cancers being treated with anti-EGFR-based therapies, the survival is below 20 months, which is poor, and I would say this contains a hazard, um, and we have to um, co consider that risk that is associated to that. Now, if we look at the left-sided tumors, we already have agreed that bevacizumab acts um, um, beneficially in these cancers. We can see that we can here reach um, survival times exceeding um, 30 months or approaching 30 months. However, we can even be better using an anti-EGFR agent up front, uh, reaching here um, survival times between 38 and 43 months. Now, what about response rate? And here we go into, uh, an, I would say, an interesting um, area, and that shows um, um, here that the um, effects on response rates may be similar in right and left-sided cancers. You can see here that the hazard ratios are both on the same side um, um, of, the, um, of the bar, 2.45 um, um, hazard ratio in left-sided and uh, 1.4, favoring the anti-GVR therapy um, in the right-sided cancers. If you look at the head-to-head -head comparisons, we see the same picture. And I think I was really interested to see the um, um, presentation by um, Michael Geisel from the IAO. He showed very nicely that the addition of panitumumab to Folfox erie based chemotherapy, um, 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 in, in fact, um, increased the um, response rate from 38% to 70%. However, this was not associated with an improved progression for survival, and you can see the forest plot, which is really within the right-sided cancers in favor of Folfox Erie chemotherapy and not of the panitumumab addition. So the conclusion here is that in right-sided primary tumors, there is a discordant effect of panitumumab on response rate versus progression for survival. Later line treatments, I will just cut the story very, very short. We um, are happy to have the NCIC trial, which looked at cetuximab versus best supportive care in last line treatment. What we can see here is in KRAS wild type patient that cetuximab is actually effective in right sided cancers, but is certainly much more effective in left sided cancers. So, what is the truth? That was the title. The truth is that there is certainly a continuum of DNA alterations. So the separation between left and right maybe look as somewhat crude and artificial. This is very nicely depicted um, in the paper by Lurie and co-workers published um, also this year, where you can see the continuum of prevalence of CMS subtypes on the one hand. And if you just um, understand with me that the CMS2 subtype would be the wind pathway activated and the EGFR pathway a sensitive um, group which is also associated with um, the um, 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 best overall survival, you can see that in left-sided cancers, there is 45% um, um, of patients with um, um, CMS2, um, while there in, is also in right-sided cancers a fraction of 28% with CMS2. So it's too easy to separate right and left. Right-sided cancers have sensitive compartments which do respond to anti-EGFR therapies. Now, where to go? Um, I think the way to go may possibly be um, to go away from sightedness, to understand the molecular pathology better, and possibly based on that go to tumor locations uh, rather than to sightedness. And this is, um, um, again, the work from the COPETS group, and you can see the different hazard ratios. Um, if you look at the rectum, um, put here as one um, with regard to overall survival, and uh, if you look at the hepatic flexure on the other side, 
the hazard ratio increases here to 0.7. So this can be an interesting avenue, and we will have to reevaluate our studies with regards to that concept. Now, from FIRE 3, we thought to have learned that response, early tumor shrinkage, depth of response, could be an indicator, a predictor of overall survival. I would keep this concept for the left-sided cancers. However, I would state presently, and I don't understand the background of it, that there is a discordance between response rate and overall survival in right-sided metastatic colorectal cancer. And uh, what you can see here is that the addition of an anti-EGFR agent may increase depth of response. However, we see earlier progression for survival and possibly also shorter um, overall survival in these patients. So chemotherapy or even targeted therapy may induce resistance mechanisms that we don't know about yet um, and that induce um, this um, kind of situation. So that is what we have to tackle with and possibly um, at the next Barcelona conference we can show you the data that explain that. So if I would be asked to define my take um, from what we have heard today, I would say, I would um, formulate a default recommendation. And that is if we have Russ wild type left-sided colorectal cancer, and if overall survival is the primary goal, I would say a doublet plus an anti-GFR agent based on the data that we have seen is the primary recommendation. However, I would say we can open the door and we can say if an anti-EGFR inhibitor is not available, is not accepted, or is not tolerated, I would say the doublet plus bevacizumab would be the right recommendation nowadays. And after the Cremolini paper, we have really learned that the addition of oxaliplatin to the Fulfury plus bevacizumab regimen um, does not give us an additional benefit, so we don't give these patients a triplet necessarily. Now, with regard to the Russ wild type, a right-sided uh, metastatic colorectal cancer patient, I think the default recommendation should be a triplet plus bevacizumab, according, again, to the TRIPE data, or if not tolerated, a doublet, if overall survival is the primary goal. However, if response rate or conversion therapy is the primary goal, we would probably think or consider at least a triplet plus an anti-GFR agent. This takes at risk, but um, we um, can uh, look at that. So let me summarize here. Um, with regard to a clinical practice recommendation for left-sided primary tumors in RAS wild type metastatic colorectal cancer, I would formulate nowadays, we should define RAS and BRAF mutation status upfront, certainly prefer an anti-EGFR agent in first-line treatment if prolongation of overall survival is the primary goal in most patients. And if an anti-EGFR agent is not accepted or tolerated, we should switch or choose a doublet plus of a system up. Now, what about the uh, right-sided primary tumors? We should definitely focus in these patients specifically on the exploration of family history. We should define BRAF mutation and the MSI status with um, great importance. We should prefer, as a first-line uh, treatment option, a triplet plus um, uh, bevacizumab if tolerated, and an alternative option could be a triplet plus an anti-GFR agent. However, if tumor reduction or conversion therapy is the primary goal, and if you are willing to evaluate early tumor response, for example, after six to eight weeks, and in case of insufficient response, you need to immediately switch to bevacizumab-based uh, therapy unless you take the risk that the patient has a shorter survival. Thank you very much.